This episode has been brought to you by Flowstate, the unlimited web flow development service. Find out more at flowstate.dev. Hello and welcome to another episode of Webflow and Code, where I teach you the underlying code you're writing in Webflow. Welcome to the new setup. I mean, it won't be this setup always, but we've got an LED light, and of course it's purple. I've got a new microphone, new camera. Hopefully this will lead to um, slightly better quality videos. Last time you saw me, I was in Kenya. I'm now back in the UK. See, already stuff is starting to mess up. Okay, boom, boom, boom. We're back in business. So I haven't done a stream in a little while. I normally stream every Sunday because I'm trying to learn new tools. I'm trying to effectively remove the development layer and have designers take complete control over the, the website building process for my company, Jupiter and the Giraffe. Last week I did it, maybe it was the time before that, I took a look at Dora and this was completely unknown to me. A friend of mine sent it and then I started to see it pop up on YouTube and it seemed like the perfect solution because my company, Jupiter and the Giraffe, we work with immersive companies. This is AI, this is VR, this is all this up and coming stuff to be the intersection between digital and reality and this this claims to be an immersive design tool jumped into it and i do believe it is in beta so i'm just gonna hand you that uh, knowledge but let's go through some things that i really enjoyed about dora and then we can talk about some improvements that i i think they could make so one thing i really like about dora is the editor now they've taken huge cues from figma so if you're familiar with Figma, you're gonna like a lot of the way the interface looks, having things hug or fill. They're also using what Wix Studio called docking, where paddings and margins are used as a percentage. It's certainly a different way, ultimately allowing you to drag and drop things on the canvas wherever you want them, whatever size you need them, and the responsivity is taken care of by simply scaling that design as the, as the browser becomes narrower. I'm not saying it's an, like the selling feature of a tool like this. It's still in its early days. I'm optimistic that this could become quite interesting. Using existing, almost antiquated CSS properties, there's no new CSS properties here, it's just paddings and margins. But anyway, that I think is a great, uh, interesting, side to Dora. Obviously the next thing is its standout feature which is the immersive or 3D aspect to the tool. Webflow needs a third party service like Spline. Of course you can use 3JS which I have other episodes on but uh, ultimately it's a third party service that you need to rely on them to kind of bring 3D into your website. Whereas Dora's primary focus is it's the ability to bring in 3D files and what's more, which might be a third point, I'm not too sure, but the keyframing that you are able to do is much more nuanced than Webflows. It looks like when I used to use Flash and ActionScript, God, those were the days, but actually it's more like 3D Max or Maya. You have a bar at the bottom and you can plot keyframes in amongst them and animate things. And you can actually interact with the scene itself. Like you've got the cameras in there, you've got the lights and just this a really tight integration. Unfortunately, this is not production ready, this tool. The HTML that gets generated, unless they've changed, I mean, it's been about three or four weeks now since I used the tool, it was just nonsensical. It was as if it was rendering a, another website underneath my one. There was a lot of junk content and things like that. I couldn't find the HTML markup that I had written. Where's the actual, and there's this random SEO content thing here as well. Like, what is that? I have no idea what was going on. The immersive websites aren't necessarily gonna be like SEO focused. You still need the content there, especially from an accessibility standpoint. So, I mean, for me, this was already a no-go because we're building immersive marketing websites. If you're building experiential games or something like that, where again, SEO or accessibility is less of a concern, then maybe it's the right tool for you, but I just could not recommend it purely and simply because of that. Also, the tool, again, it's in beta, but it bugs out. It bugged out on me a couple of times and I couldn't move anything, kind of had to restart it. So be wary that it is still a developing tool. I don't think I stressed how 
difficult of a time I had with the designer. I was doing so much stuff that just wasn't working. I was I couldn't figure out even inspecting it once it's been published or whatever. There seems to be a lot wrong with the designer, certainly from my perspective. So I do encourage if you want to dig deeper, look at the stream. But yeah, didn't stress that as much as I thought I should have. I want to do an episode on this more in depth because I think it's a as an idea that I'm trying to formulate in my mind but their big release recently was their AI websites. AI website or AI production of, of websites is in my opinion it's a great starting point if you know nothing about what you're doing but if you know what you're doing then the results are mediocre at best even to some extent reloom. I mean they've obviously taken a lot of cues from successful marketing websites and, and SaaS websites and they've built that into their tool to generate you a wireframe on a successful campaign. But it lacks so much nuance to the product and all the rest of it and the requirements that the client has that it almost becomes unusable. Relum is a bit of an extreme one. I, I think Relum is okay but when we use uh, Dora as an example it's not really that usable. It's fun and again, if you're just getting a fun little website up or whatever, it, it's just not usable. My theory, which I'm still trying to formulate, which will hopefully make it into a, a longer episode, is this idea, I believe AI needs to be modular. Wix does this great, Pinegrow does this great, where you can select an area, select a thing, a button or an, um, a hero section or something, and then write a prompt to affect that specific thing. Just don't use AI to develop the whole page. And this was Dora's big announcement a few, like a week before, maybe even a few days before I used it, was AI generative stuff. I don't think it's the future. With regards to Dora, I think its standout feature is exactly what they're going for to create kind of these full page immersive interactive experiences. Now that's the difference between, you know, a website which needs SEO, it needs accessibility. This is great for building where 3D takes up the whole entire page and through scrolling, you can animate things and interact with things there. It can do the, the website thing and you'll see like their examples, like a plane flying around. But as I say, the exported code is, is rubbish. And I hope that that is a bug or, or something. Maybe I'm missing something there, but I think that's what where they're gonna stand out is, a, yeah, these full page experiences as opposed to like marketing website. If you're into that sort of stuff and you wanna support Dora and help them grow the tool and whatever, go all in on this idea. So that'll do it for this week. I just wanna give a shout out to Leo, who I work very closely with. He does all the designs that I'm creating on the, the streams that I'm doing. Um, he's really been a lifesaver. He has his own subscription design service if you wanna check that out. Like, subscribe if you haven't already. And until the next time, happy no coding.